So this is our second of two video about what to expect after your anterior cervical discectomy. Here we'll talk about what's to do about swallowing problems, how to manage your cervical collar, what to do about quitting or cutting down on smoking, and at the end we'll recap the entire uh, set of recommendations including the cycle of medications. So let's get started. One common problem people have after anterior cervical discectomy is problems with swallowing. Okay, and why is that? Well, we take your esophagus, which is the tube between your mouth and your stomach, we move it one way, and then we let it come back the other way, and then after all that manipulation, your esophagus gets mad at us. It doesn't like that manipulation at all. So, what can we do to make your esophagus happy again? Well, let's talk about that, shall we? One of the things you can do right away is to get some ice right on your neck, like we talked about earlier in the video. Because what that'll do is it'll cut down the swelling of the tissues around there and generally make you feel better. It cuts down the inflammatory response. So ice is a really good thing to use. The second thing you can do is to get up and walk. Why is that? Because as you walk, what you're going to do is you're going to be vertical, right? And that's going to allow the lymphatic drainage to come down out of there and just decrease the amount of stuff in your neck and you'll feel better. The third thing you can do is manipulate your food, your diet, for a few days. Typically, you know, three, four days after surgery at least. You're going to want your food to be soft, okay, no big steak dinners, because that's easier to swallow. You're going to want it to be either cool, yeah, cool or warm. Generally not ice cold or boiling hot, okay, because that's going to be easier to swallow. So we're talking uh, yogurt, milkshake, soup, rice, pasta, uh, if you can get ground beef or something like that down, great. Uh, tofu works good. All that kind of stuff, all that sort of comfort food that you like anyway, mashed potatoes, go ahead and indulge for a few days. You have my permission. The other thing you're going to want to do is drink plenty of water. Why is that? Because hydration is good anyway. And you're not going to be feeling like swallowing very much. So consciously increase your water content. You know, everybody talks about eight glasses a day, probably not that much. But, you know, at least, you know, one in the morning, one with breakfast, one with uh, lunch, one with dinner. And any time during the day you can think of, down a glass of water, you'll be uh, making yourself feel a lot better. And probably the most important thing is just hang in there. Everybody gets it. There's a very high probability it's just going to go away if you just hang in there and follow these directions. Some people need to wear a cervical collar after surgery, typically a hard collar, hard plastic collar. And uh, the general rule is if you hate it, that means it's working. Kind of like the IRS, you're not supposed to like it, okay? So, um, generally I tell people, this is my opinion by the way, this is opinion, not ex cathedra. My opinion is you should wear it when you're up, even sitting up, but I tell people you can take it off when you're lying down in bed, because your head is being supported by your pillow. But keep it by the bedside, uh, uh, table so that if you have to get up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, you just slap it on. Get in the habit of having that collar on when you're up, when your head is above your shoulders, and uh, you can get, reward yourself by taking it off. People have collars for lots of different reasons. Uh, sometimes they, I put people in collars because they smoke. Here's an easy way to get out of your collar. Quit smoking! Some people have uh, collars because they have osteoporosis. Okay, and we want a little extra support short term. If you do, then please, please take your medicine as well as taking your collar because if we caught the osteoporosis and are treating it now, this is a really good thing that's going to keep you out of trouble way down the line in the future. So that's it about collars. Let's talk about smoking for a second. If you do smoke, uh, then I'm going to rant at you for a little bit. Okay, so smoking. We're going to talk about facts. We're going to talk about opinions. The fact is... Smoking is bad for you, okay? For all the reasons you know. I'll tell you my opinion 
And again, this is just opinion. I am not the Pope uh, speaking ex cathedra, but my opinion is this. If you do smoke, uh, smoke as little as you can around the surgery. Every cigarette you don't smoke is that much better you're going to heal, okay? So even if you go down from a pack a day to one or two a day, that's better than staying at a pack, okay? My opinion is that if you substitute the nicotine, okay, that's a good thing. Things like the uh, patch, the gum, the electronic cigarettes. There is a lot of opinion out there that says that nicotine is bad for bone healing, and it probably is, but far worse for bone healing are the tars in the cigarette. Those are those tars, the aromatic hydrocarbons that give you lung cancer, okay? They're bad for your healing cells as well. So if you can get off of cigarettes entirely great, if not, substitute them with the nicotine, smoke as little as you can. When I have people uh, who do smoke, uh, I tell them to get a family member who smokes to quit with them. Because it's well known that if you guys quit together, okay, and you have somebody that is quitting with you, each of you has a much higher chance of quitting than just somebody trying to quit alone when the other guy in your household is still smoking, okay? Uh, and when I have people who do smoke, I put them in a cervical collar because your bones are not going to heal as well as they would otherwise, and you're going to need a little extra support. And the quickest way to get out of that hateful collar and go back and drive and live your life and do everything you want to do is to get rid of the cigarettes. So let's recap. You're going to have a number of issues after surgery. Uh, the bad news is that you'll have them. The good news is that they typically go away on their own. And the better news is that you can do a lot to make the impact on your life less and make them go away a lot faster. We're talking about things like pain, feeling tired, difficulty swallowing, having to wear a collar, and if you are smoking, then smoking. So let's go through this a little bit at a time. As far as your pain goes, the most important thing is to get on a schedule of narcotics, and then I want you to follow that up or interlace that with a schedule of Tylenol and ibuprofen. So you're getting something every three hours or so, all around the clock when you're awake. And, that'll, and just do that for a few days after surgery until you feel like you don't need it anymore. In addition to that, what you can do is add on some ice and some walking. So get some ice on your neck uh, a few times a day and then start walking about every hour while you're awake. And all that together is going to really, really cut down on the number of uh, times that you feel really awful and will really boost your uh, getting faster, or, excuse me, getting better faster. If you got a collar, wear it when you're up. And for heaven's sake, quit smoking. Okay, so the usual disclaimer, you watching this video does not make me your doctor. Use common sense. If it hurts when you do that, don't do that. And always keep in contact with your own healthcare provider throughout the. So we are all over the web. We have a very active Facebook page with our patients. We are big time tweeters and we are way into Instagram. To see more videos about anterior cervical discectomy surgery, general spine info, our blog, or to contact us, just hit us at DrRods.com.